Hi, I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. In a recent column, I discussed financial trauma. And I define these as money-related occurrences that either as a single extreme event or chronic patterns can overwhelm a person and become traumatic. Some emotional signs of financial trauma are depression, ambivalence, irregularly reliving the original event, anger, mood swings, overeating, trouble concentrating, chronic fear, uh, shame, and anger. Emotional trauma can develop around eight general types of money events. And those are giving, receiving, spending, saving, loaning, borrowing, earning, and taking. So typically, if you feel a sense of shame around any of these, there may be some past financial trauma there. Uh, let's take a look at the first one, giving. While research has found that we may get longer lasting happiness by giving to others rather than receiving for ourselves, giving out of chronic manipulation, guilt, and shame, uh, also obligation, can become a source of financial trauma. Second, receiving. Uh, a gift is an act of generosity that can express care or appreciation. Receiving money can be a source of happiness, and gratefulness, fulfillment, excitement. However, when a gift comes wrapped with strings attached, it ceases to be a gift. Strings that turn a gift into a traumatic event might include guilt, manipulation, or expectations of reciprocity or future favors. Let's take a look at spending. Spending money is the way we use it to create and support physical, emotional, and financial well-being. When we spend money in ways that support our best interest and values, the congruency and alignment of the spending produces a general sense of well-being. Generally, money that's never spent is relatively useless in supporting our needs, goals, dreams, and the desires that make life worth living. However, money spent in ways that don't align with our values or our best interest can cause internal dissonance, stress, depression, unhappiness. All of this could result in financial trauma. The same is true of money spent as a result of guilt, shame, manipulation, coercion, or again, obligation. Let's consider saving. Saving and investing money is a critical component of supporting future spending, which helps create overall well-being. However, accumulating money out of fear, obligation, anger, coercion, guilt, shame, manipulation can become traumatic. Uh, loaning, a popular method to create cash flow from one's savings or investments, is loaning money to banks, corporations, governments, or other individuals. The loans most likely to result in financial trauma are those to family or friends. Such loans often have emotional strings attached and the parties involved may overlook the importance of appropriate paperwork, security, creditworthiness, and clear agreement on the terms. Uh, there also need to be consequences for failing to make timely payments. Um, borrowing. A lot of financial trauma comes from being unable to pay indebtedness. Whether the cause is poor financial choices or adverse life events like a job loss, there is shame around consequences such as property being repossessed or bankruptcy. Uh, even in less extreme circumstances, borrowing from family or friends could have a lot of shame with it. Next, earning. Earning money can be a source of sustenance, self-esteem, and freedom. 
can also carry trauma when a person is underemployed, overemployed, or recent or, or um, uh, <clears throat> recent earnings that have uh, st strings attached in the form of unwritten expectations, uh, coercion, exploitation, or manipulation. So finally, taking. Now, <laughs> I'm not sure there's an upside to taking money, right? Embezzling, shoplifting, cheating on taxes, or robbery are all stealing money that rightfully belongs to another. Whether it stems from financial need, anger, fear, a deep sense of entitlement, taking almost always leads to financial trauma, both for the taker and the takee. Well, the topic of financial trauma is, of course, much more complex than this brief overview. What is overwhelming for one person may not have as much impact on someone else. It's very contextual and circumstantial and relative to the person. Whether an event or pattern of behavior results in financial trauma has more to do with its emotional impact, the emotional overwhelm on the system, than its financial consequences. Thanks for joining me.